moving from a little bit of kind of 10,000 feet, let's go to, to some basics. You're uh, the head of uh, manager research at your firm. What are you looking in the managers? What type of characteristics? What, the, what, what are, what are the, 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 the red flags? Let's, let's talk about red flags first and then what, what excites you the most uh, when you, when you want to pull the trigger? Sure. So um, we talked about the macro factors that we care about when we're underwriting managers. And it has to be, as I mentioned, a mode, some volatility, some tradable events in their markets. But once you've narrowed it down to a segment of the market that you really like, it might be convertible arbitrage, it might be ILS, um, the universe of managers inside of that group of strategies is still very, very large. So narrowing it down from you know, a smaller funnel to one or two managers that we might hire in a given year, um, that takes a lot of work. And uh, that's why the friction costs and that's why the trading costs of hiring, hiring and firing managers are so high. And that's why you know, I have a team of people doing it is it takes a lot of work. Um, the uh, things that we care about most when we're underwriting managers, philosophically, I'd say it's pro first and foremost process from the investment standpoint. Um, it can be systematic, it can be discretionary, it can be anything in between, but it does have to be repeatable. Uh, our own work is very process driven, um, and we sort of expect that of the managers that we partner up with as well. It doesn't matter how they do it. It might be all in the, in, in the head investor's head, but um, there has to be a logic and there has to be a process to decision making. You need to be aware of how your decision making works, what it takes to, make, uh, to get a position into the portfolio, and equally importantly, what it takes to get out of a position when you've uh, either achieved your desired outcome or maybe things didn't work out the way you did, uh, the way you wanted to. So if there was nothing else in the investment process, that's the one thing we care about. Uh, the other side that frankly is in my mind or in my experience just as important, if not more so, is everything that's non-investments related. Um, it's the operations, it's the business, it's risk management, it's compensation, uh, it's controls, it's compliance. Um, again, we have a separate operational due diligence team that does a lot of that work for us, but even as an investment uh, person, when I underwrite managers, I'm laser focused on understanding that business. Because at the end of the day, all of these are small businesses. There's a couple of decision makers, then there's a team of people around them. And if that business is not set up correctly, that's a recipe for disaster. In my experience, again, I've been doing this for literally 20 years. I just had my anniversary uh, on Friday. Um, I've seen many, many more hedge funds blow up for business and operations reasons than for investment funds, or rather, Investments, when you see underperformance, when you see investment problems, more often than not, they're a symptom of something wrong in the operational setup of the firm. It could be improper risk controls, improper governance, not compensating your team so that they all leave, uh, not putting guardrails around what they can and cannot do, overextending yourself, not thinking about your financing at a time when you know, there's a liquidity crisis and suddenly you're forced to uh, sell your positions. That's how firms go out of business the ones who place just as much importance on the operational and business side of things as they do on investments, that's the, in my experience, that's the recipe for long-term success, not just you know, making the most money in any one year.